Give a warm welcome to Dr. Ed Long Jr. Amen. Come on, y'all, give him a restored life welcome. Amen. Dr. Ed Long Jr. Amen. He is a native of Atlanta, Georgia, a Grammy Award winner. He's went to many schools and got doctorates and all that good stuff. I'm paraphrasing bio, so we want because I want to get out of his way. Amen. 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 Listen. He's no stranger to us. He's actually been here before. So let's treat him like he's at home. Amen. Embrace, pull on him. Amen. Get whatever you need. Amen. Amen. Come on, Dr. Ed Long. Amen. It works, it works. <laughs> Listen, before you take your seats, I want to clear one thing up. Um, our awesome officiant and leader for our youth. Can we make some noise for it? Can we put our hands together? I just don't want my co-members of the Recording Academy mad at me. I haven't won a Grammy. But I will receive that prophetically. How about that? All right. <laughs> I'm Grammy considered for um, a book of mine, and I love the title to your song because uh, the title to my book is "Son of a Bishop." And so, when you came up rapping about being God's son, I'm right there with you, my brother. It's going up in a major way. Let's make some more noise for him again. He's got the energy I used to have. I got a 20-month-old son, and uh, we're about 16 weeks right now on baby number two, so I got to get your energy back. <laughs> Clearly, I have it at certain times, but I got to get it back for every other time. You feel me? The parents understand what I'm saying right there. Here we go. Hey, listen, I'm honored to be here, and um, one thing about life, I'm really already teaching is that we have to be flexible in any environment that we go into, whether it's your work environment, your home environment, or a very uncomfortable environment. We have to stay flexible because the environment should not impede us from doing what we do. I'm gonna say that again. The environment should not impede us from doing what we do. Genesis 1, and I've been in this space for the last couple of weeks. I'll tell you a few things in a moment. But in talking about the blessing that is on us, in us, and around us, the blessing of God was spoke in an environment. And the only reason that we began to struggle with manifesting the blessing is because we allow our own actions to negatively impact the environment. Yes, yes. I'm gonna unpack that impact in just a few moments, but I gotta talk to the band for just a second. Unfortunately, I'm not able to plug my phone in. Usually bands walk away for the first 30 minutes when the minister is up ministering. Y'all feel me? We can't do that today. 
So I don't know if we volunteer in our services or if we on church payroll. But either way it goes, we're going to earn it today. <laughs> so I need y'all to just keep a vibe going for me as I'm speaking. My dad told me this, and that's why I put my cloak back on. I told you before I stepped out. Never let your words go out naked. Never let your words go out naked. In Genesis, before God started speaking, let there be, the spirit was moving. Y'all miss what I'm saying? God created an environment before he spoke his words. Never let your words go out naked. Don't send your word out if the environment has not been set. That's why we sing praise and worship before the preaching. Because the music, because the spirit begins to break up the ground. The spirit begins to do what the words don't have to work and fight to do. The spirit does some things that now when I speak a word, the ground is broken up that the word can take root. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. This helps relationships, ladies. Because don't no Negro want to come in the house. I know it's youth Sunday. But all of us are young. I'm looking at young faces all around this room. 60 years young, 80 years young, 50 years young. I, I'm looking at young faces all around this room. And even to the teenagers and the younger, I'm helping you already. Don't nobody, you don't want to be approached by nobody. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Just running off at the mouth at you. But when we create an environment. Baby, you know you look good. <laughs> Just something about the way you walked up in this house. <laughs> Just got me excited. See, see, what's happening is that we're creating an environment. There's something else coming with that. You already know that you got a reprimand to present. But you don't want to hear all that barking. Baby, it's just something about the way that you walk to that trash can because you know you didn't take it out last week and that didn't make me feel appreciated that I had to do that but I just like how you walk to that trash can it just gets me excited and then to even see you walk further out the door and grab that can on two wheels. Don't look at me. Look at the street when you're pushing it to the curb because I like to see you, baby, from behind, too. You, you, you see how you can create an environment before you speak a word, before you give a command or a demand to that man. You can create an environment. Mm. You gonna have a man switch occupations. He's no longer an accountant. He's gonna become a trash man just because of how you spoke to him. It's something about creating that environment. Lord, I'll be seated at your feet to worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet forever Lord I'll be seated at your feet to worship at your feet I'll be right here at your feet forever Lord I'll be seated at your feet to worship at your feet
It's so simple. Come on. Lord, I'll be seated at your feet to worship at your feet. I'll be right here at your feet forever. Last time. about being at the feet of God. Keep that going. Keep that plan. It's just something about being at the feet of God. For I'll make you to lay down in green pastures. Many of us have come into this new year hustling, working, grinding. I don't want this service to be that. This needs to be a moment of peace and recalibration for us today. A moment of understanding, refocus, a moment of realignment with the word. Worship at your feet, I'll be right here at your feet forever. I'll be at your feet to worship at your, I'll be at your feet forever. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 1, I'm going to jump around quite a bit, taking one out of the late Bishop Quincy Carswell's playbook. I'm going to flow through this word today very extemporaneously. Some of us are, mm, as I said, extemporaneous, but don't know what it means. It's all right, I didn't know it when he first said it to me. I had to look it up. And all that getting, come on. It means to flow through something without going super deep, but sharing a general knowledge for the purpose of reception and impartation. Extemporaneous. Your feet forever. We got Genesis 1. For those who don't know, it's the first book in the Bible. I want to honor Pastor John, Pastor Crossland for allow me to be in this space again on today this new place apostle called it the junkyard that's gonna make sense to y'all in a moment genesis one i'm gonna jump around one through two and then we're gonna tap six through ten listen anytime we read the word of the lord and i know you just took your seat we stand and we reverence the word. I'm going to tell you why as we work through this. Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens with an S and the earth. And now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Verse 6 says, God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. Verse 7, so God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water 
above it. And it was, somebody say, so. God called the vault the sky. And there was then evening and there was morning the second day. Verse 9, and God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let dry ground appear. And it was, somebody say, so. Verse 10, God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was what? Good. Father, thank you for the water above and the water beneath. We thank you for the separation that you did so we can know how to navigate our courses of life. I thank you for this word that you've given me, that it speak to every individual in this room. In the way that their ears acutely hear it, that their hearts receive it, and that their minds interpret it for the purpose that you have given to them. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ, we pray. If you agree with this prayer, say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Get somebody high found, a high five, I'm sorry, a pound, a hug, dap, whatever it is that you do before you take your seat, just tell them it is good for us to be here. It's good, it's good, it's good. It's good for us to be up in here up in here. There's a quote by a gentleman named Thomas Aquinas who states, if it's the highest aim of the captain to preserve his ship, <laughs> he would have kept it in the port forever. I'm going to say it again. If the goal of the captain who's navigating the empress for Norwegian, who's navigating the Grand Imperial for Carnival Cruise Lines, who is navigating the new ship I want to go on, the one that, you know what I'm talking about, that new one that Ritz Carlton just dropped. You feel me? Y'all knew where I was going. Y'all seen it. Yeah, going to hit you about 15,000 a night. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's the goal for them to truly preserve and ensure that the ship stays in pristine condition, they would never set it out from the port. If it was God's design for your life to not have any damage, <laughs> any bumps and bruises, any toiling, any trial or tribulation, then God would have kept you in his mouth forever. He would have kept you safely in the port of his ruah and never spoke you into existence. But the mere fact that God spoke man around verse 26, 27, and 28 right here in Genesis means that God wanted to set you sail. God wanted to release you as a vessel to navigate the journey of life called your purpose. I'm going to get us somewhere in just a few moments. For the sake of teaching, boy, y'all hit me with my theme music. Somebody felt like dropping it when they heard that little dun, dun. Listen, if you're taking notes, 
I don't want to speak to any dumb believers today. I don't want to speak to any ignorant kingdom citizens today. You know we got those, don't you? We got a lot of dumb believers. A lot of ignorant saints. I like what you said. You get what I'm saying. How can you be a believer if you don't understand what you believe in? I'm challenging a few of us because if your whole testimony is caught up in what apostles said, then I'm, I'm, I'm really challenging uh, your spiritual aptitude right now. It's impossible to believe something, which is the elementary stage to knowing something. You can't know that you know that you know something if first you don't believe. And you can't believe if you don't have the understanding or the knowledge of what it is that you believe in. I'm just trying to teach something for a moment. <laughs> so let's understand what water is. Because all in this text that we just read, we understand that there's water doing something in conjunction with the Spirit of God. Water in the Hebrew means <laughs> something that is navigatable. It is pronounced ma'im, which is M-A apostrophe I-M. M-A apostrophe I-M. In the Greek, it is known as hydro. In the Greek, water is known as hydro. Now, I went to Middle school, if you come out of our parking lot, we swing a right. We can take about one, two, three at the most lights. Right across the street from Marshall's Distribution Center, you will find a little jail. I mean, not a jail. I mean, a, a little um, um, correctional facility. It's, it's not really supposed to be that. Uh, it's a school. <laughs> that when I went there, we called it Killer Grove. That's what it is. I've been waiting on them to change the, the, the marquee. You, you feel it? It says Miller Grove, but I just, I, it's false advertising. Recently, I ran a program for young men there called Rise Up. And when we started working there, I realized ain't much change. <laughs> and so, so, so on you Sunday, what's the Hebrew, bro? I, I don't know what you're talking about. What's the Greek? I, 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 what does that matter to me? So, so I can't just give you the Hebrew and the Greek. I also got to give you the Ebonics. So water in Ebonics simply means the drip. All right? That's it. It's just, it's just the drip. All right? It, it's, 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 it's how we look. It's how we flow. It's how we move. It's how we breathe. It's the way that we have our being. Some of us don't feel like nothing if we ain't got our drip. You might not know this about your grandma, <laughs> but if she don't have on her pearls, she just don't feel the same. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? On first Sunday without her hat, it, 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 that's her drip. It just don't feel the same. So some of us, if we ain't decorated a certain way, we just don't feel the same. But the ultimate drip is being in the flow with God. We're going to get somewhere real soon. I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'm not, I'm not going to mess you. I mean, football season is over, so the fellas really ain't got nowhere to go. But, but, I, but I, I understand. I, I understand. We got to eat and we got some things that we have to do. So, so I, I want to I look at a ship from the sake of alliteration. All right. A ship is a large vessel that travels the world's oceans, navigating waterways, carrying cargo and passengers, supporting specialized missions such as defense, research, and of course, fishing. There's a lot of things involved with the ship. All right. A vessel. And ships are usually 
distinguished from regular little boats <laughs> because of their size, their shape, and their low capacity along with purpose. Now, the last time I checked, there was a song that used to say, use me, Lord, <laughs> to show someone the way and enable me to stay. My And of a love to you. Sound like some Grammy winners in here today. The word confirms to us that we are vessels. Vessels of God's kingdom. Very basic this morning. And so if I understand that I am a vessel, which is a maritime term, Maritime meaning the law of the seas. Then I'm connected to God in a different kind of way than everybody else that's walking up and down Covington Highway. I understand that as a vessel, I'm a ship. I'm not a boat, but I am a ship. And I'm carrying something with me. Cargo for God's kingdom. Not only am I carrying something, I'm carrying someone. I'm carrying a heritage with me. I'm carrying a lineage with me. I'm carrying transformation all within me. I am a vessel of God. As we recognize, I don't call it Black History Month because I'm not a color. I don't call it African this and all these type of things. I call it Kingdom Diaspora Month. Because I came out of God before I ever got any type of pigment. Before we were placed in a place called Africa, <laughs> Africa, I was with God the Father. And what happened is that when them folk who don't quite look like us threw us on them boats. What did they not realize is that they were carrying ships. <laughs> and they were trying to disrupt what was in us. But brought us over here to this place. And though things were temporarily thrown off. My mind is waking up to who I am. My spirit is waking up to who I am. My ears are hearing God in a new way. Everybody else ain't getting the message and that's okay because God is tapping me to go out there and remind them of what I'm waking up to in here today. I am a kingdom son. I am a kingdom daughter. And there is purpose in and on my life. I heard a brother Rico Love say it like this. Somebody say the gift is in me. The anointing is on me, and the purpose is moving about me. Come on, y'all. The gift is in me. The anointing is on me, and the purpose is all around me. And so it's not my job just to come up in here to church today just to get a word to serve my spirit. To be honest with you, I don't care if you shout or not. Because I've seen many people go to church, run, shout, foam at the mouth, run up and down the aisles, but been in debt their whole life. They have conformed to church traditional environment. But the scripture didn't call us to be conformed to anything. It caused us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so if I'm coming up in here today, my whole challenge for being in here right now is to cause you to renew your mind. Yeah. It's time out for all the church antics. It's time for us to rise up and get back to who we were called to be. I don't know about you all, but I want to teach you something. <laughs> God loves using the youth. Hear me, hear me, hear me. That's right, scream, shout, that's it. Use that voice, come into them words. 
It's people in this room who are jealous of y'all right now. Because you remind them of the opportunities that they missed. And the reason why I celebrate your apostle, your pastor, and this young lady with this Joseph colorful cloak on. I wore my black when I had to tone down so they could shine. You feel me? Let, let them drip, you know. I celebrate them. Because many people in this room have not gotten over the decisions that they made when they were your age. And some people get jealous of the opportunities that are ahead of you because they didn't take them. They didn't make the right choice. And instead of empowering you to make the right choices, they'd rather sit back and watch you stumble and make your own mistakes. You know what that's called? Spell love backwards. But they love you enough. She got it finally. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> For those who don't know what love spelled backwards is, it is evil. I challenge you all to suck up everything that's being presented so that your life can go further faster than ours have. That's the whole point in you being up in here today is so that these works and greater will you do. That's it. God loves using the youth because when it comes to people who are a little bit more older, younger than y'all, they had too many bad experiences that they stopped listening to God. <laughs> I ain't talked to now one of them, but their responses let you know that we just talked just now. <laughs> ain't no cap today. None. Feel me. Because if they were honest with you, every time that God offers them a fresh word, they want to believe it, but they start arguing with God because of their circumstance. How is this possible? There was one man that wanted to be born again. Jesus said, sure, you can be born again, but he was a baller. He was rich. And so the Lord said, all you got to do is give away your stuff and come on. And he didn't enter the kingdom. Why? Because he had to scratch his head too much about how am I going to get rid of my portfolio? How am I going to get rid of my good credit and do, I, I, how am I going to dismiss all that I have amassed, all that I have accumulated and worked for in life to be in your kingdom? He had to work through too much stuff to receive the blessing. There's others in here God wants to set them up for blessings. But Lord, I got to get hip replacement surgery. <laughs> you telling me I'm going to Walk, do all of this, and go to the nations and do all these things. Lord, I, I can't even walk through the airport. How am I going to do this and how am I going to do that? It, it, they let too much interfere with what God is telling them. But when I read the word of God and the Lord goes and talks to a young Samuel and speaks a word to him because he has stopped talking to his mentor, Eli, when I read the word of the Lord, he goes and speaks to a young Joseph because he couldn't speak to his daddy no more. When he goes and talks to and anoints a David because the Negro who was in office or on the throne, he was about to get rid of him because he wasn't listening no more. When, 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 when Jesus is spoken to and starts moving about at the age of 12 because 
The Pharisees, meaning the rulers of the church world back then, was, they was on some other stuff. God speaks to and uses the youth. The challenge to you today is, number one, to understand I'm a vessel of God, not the enemy. I'm a vessel of God and not gang gang. I'm a vessel of God and not the streets. I am a vessel of God. See, ships can be built rather slowly. It takes time to build a ship. How many of y'all like going to the lake and riding a jet ski? To the lake and riding a jet ski. I don't know what else she ride, but... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I say that for the adult service. Hey. <laughs> Jet skis can be built like that. Boats take a little longer. But 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 they can be turned out rather quickly. But I was watching little documentary on how long it took them to build the Titanic. We talking about years in the making. What am I saying? What's in us is so great that wait, we might see everybody else getting theirs fast, quick, but we don't know what corners they are cutting behind the scenes. We don't know what scams they're running. We don't know who they lying to. We don't know who they're playing. We don't know all the different things that they're doing to get theirs and get out on the water, just cutting the loose. We don't know, but what's in us? It's going to take time to develop because a ship is a large vessel that's carrying something that others can't carry. I, I'm trying to help you with something. See, see, when I just called out Samuel, <laughs> Samuel had to hear from God for himself. Watch this. Samuel was not hearing for, from God for himself. But he was hearing for God for himself. I'm going to make sense in a minute. He had to hear from God for himself. So he then could help everybody else. Because hearing from God was developing in him his prophetic gift in order to have impact on everybody that he was going to come into contact with. That's why he couldn't mix with everybody. He couldn't learn from everybody. He couldn't sit underneath everybody. You cannot give everybody your attention. You can't give everybody your attention. I lost a lot of time giving too many folks my attention. I remember when I was at Killer Grove, right? There's a little song that came out. This little guy who just performed at the Super Bowl, Usher Bowl, one of them, I don't know what it's called, but, but, but he came out and they was holding him up in the crowd. He said, turn down for what? I don't took her back. So when I was in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, he had another song. Who you with? Who you with? Who you with? Get crunk. Who you with? Who you with? A town. Who you with? What's up? Who you with? Get crunk. Do you with? Hey, to the flow. To the. Let me stop. Now let me see. 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 
We rebuked that already. We, we don't dealt with that. I, I ain't coming here to conjure that back up. That's how you got in that situation in the first place. <laughs> we don't want them repeating your decisions now. Y'all was supposed to say, who you with? Jesus, who you with? Jesus. And nobody say, just, uh, you be went back to where you was <laughs> and who you was with. <laughs> The guy's name is Lil John. And, and, and y'all won't remember this because we got everything on our phone now. We got Spotify, we got uh, a title, we got all this other stuff, yeah. But there used to be these things that used to spin what we call compact disc, all right? Yeah. And, 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 and you couldn't move too quick like this when you was holding it. Or it would skip. It would start, it would mess up your vibe. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you had to be real player, real smooth, real suave and debonair when you were listening to your music back then. You feel me? And I was laying in bed with my CD man by my side. Our headphones didn't go in our ear. We ain't had this in-ear thing. It used to be clunky and just all over your joint. You feel me? <laughs> Prime example. Prime example. Now, my dad caught me laying in the bed. He done come home late from church, all of this. And he walks in my room and snatches the headphones off my head. I'm laying in bed listening to who you with. So, so deaf all stars. And as he snatches the headphones off of my head, he looked at me and said, stop giving the devil access. Stop giving the devil access. Between here and here. She good. She ain't bother me. The space between here and here is what the enemy wants. Because the enemy is trying to give you as the captain of the ship different coordinates when Adam and Eve were in the garden they had already see received coordinates of where they were to go what they were to do and what cargo they were carrying but the enemy told them the same thing differently to get them off course you want to know how to identify who you should be listening to and connected with? I'm glad y'all asked. Thank you. If somebody is telling you something different than what the word of God is telling you or your parents are telling you, then they're trying to lead you to a different destination. The frustration that many of the adults in this room have agreed with me about that they've had in their life is because they ended up at a destination that they don't like and they know that God did not destined for them to be at. It's simple. I'm going through this extemporaneously. <laughs> so Samuel, at a young age, Learn how to listen to God. That's your first order of business is to learn how to listen to God. That's why I started here in Genesis, because in the beginning, before your mama said, before your daddy said, God said. The direction that your mom and daddy got for your life is because God said. And so any way that you choose to go 
first stop and ask yourself, what is God saying? One thing that kept me out of a lot of trouble is my mama ingrained this in me at a young age. She would say my little nickname, childhood nickname, you don't know me like that, so don't call me that, is Cody. <laughs> you got. <laughs> and she would look at me before she would send me off to school and she would say, Cody, make sure that you stop and think. Those little three seconds can change your life. When somebody extends you an invite, don't just say, oh yeah, cool, I'm going girl, yeah, I'm with you. No, 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 let me stop and think. How does what we about to do? Where does what we about, where we, where we about to go? Who is who we about to see? How is that aligned with what God said and what my folks said? And if it's not in alignment, then you trying to get me off course. It ain't tough. <laughs> I ain't had to toil over this. It's real simple. If it's not in alignment with the direction that God is sending me, then it's trying to get me out of alignment and off course. You know, NASA Space Center was looking to launch a rocket to outer space carrying a satellite to position in a certain space in order to serve us here back in humanity. Watch this. A rocket, a ship, was carrying satellite communications, reverberating word, into space, into a set location, in order to amplify the voice, the word of God, the communication of God. What happened is that the mathematician, the NASA space scientist, who was a part of the launch team, put the coordinates in correctly. But when they launched the rocket carrying the satellite to reverberate and amplify the word of God, the communication of God to humanity here on earth and around earth, the rocket went to the wrong place. Now, how did this happen? Because the scientists did the math right, but had the terminology wrong. Used the wrong metric system. Instead of putting the coordinates in concerning feet, he put the coordinates in concerning meters. And so, shot the right ship in the wrong direction. What you're carrying is so powerful, rocket ship. <laughs> so precious, satellite. To God, his word, communicating it to others. That we have to be focused on God and God alone. Because we cannot afford to get the metrics wrong. Because not only will you end up in the wrong place, but everything that you're carrying and who you're communicating it to will also then be thrown off alignment. Let me make it plain to you. You're carrying a bloodline. 
That's heavy cargo. It's precious cargo. And a part of why some of you all, I ain't going to put you on the spot, but a part of why some of us are frustrated is because we see other teams and their families having opportunities that we don't have. Tell me I'm lying. She told me, yeah, you're right. You're right. We see other people who don't really look like us, who got this, got that. On their 16th birthday, they got a new car, not a hand-me-down. When this happened, they got that. When this happened, they got that. Many of them got two parents showing up at everything. They, 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 and we don't have none of that. A big reason why is because the ship that was carrying us got off course. It's tight, but it's right. What's inside of you is so important. Precious cargo. And if you don't know it, I'm going to tell you who does know it. The enemy. The enemy knew what Adam and Eve were carrying probably more than they did. Why? Because he had it at one point and lost it. The enemy was in authority with God, but got off course and God removed him. There are people that don't like you simply because of the potential that you have that they have lost. And so I stepped in here today to challenge you to recognize what you have and don't waste it concerning some Negroes that don't even know what life is about. You're too valuable. And every day counts. The world is moving faster now than it's ever moved before. I'm not going to be the guy that talks about what we had and what y'all ain't got and da-da-da. No, 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 no. I want you to realize what you got so you can understand the value of it. There's a quote that says, your generation knows the price of everything but the value of nothing. How much did it cost? She know the price. Yep, yep. But what's the value of them? Let me help you determine what the value of something is versus the price of it. The price is when we walk in the shop. Oh, mom, can I get them right there? Yeah, come on, everybody got them. The man just came in church Sunday talking about the Mayim or whatever he was saying in the hydro and, and the drip. Come on, that, that's the drip right there. Mom, can I get them? Can I get them? Well, how much is that, baby? What'd you say? 150? Ooh, I don't know about that. Why, mom? Come on, everybody else on my timeline just got them. They just, ooh, uh, come on, mom, why not? Ma is saying, I don't know, because you're looking at the price, and Ma understands the value. The value is, well, I love spending time with you, but if I go get them for you, and I'm making $20 an hour, and I already got to pay for this, and I already got to pay for that, then the value of those is 150 to you, but the value of them is 10 hours. I got to be away from you to get you those. And that's 10 hours that I'm spending time over here in this place with these folk who I can't stand and who can't stand me. That I got 10 hours now that I'm concerned or worried about what you're doing and who is influencing you in them 10 hours that I'm away from you. They're not just shoes. It's an opportunity for either us to spend more time together so I can pour into you or being away from you and giving the enemy an opportunity. 
Change how you look at everything that you spend. Think about it. Spending money, spending time, spending. We're spending. That's why I said you got to be careful who you're spending time with, who gets your ears. When we talk about ships, there are multiple types of ships. Somebody say, I'm a ship. I'm a ship. But what kind of ship are you? And what kind of ships are in the port with you? You need to know these things so you know who you're setting sail with. Hear me. Not S-A-I-L. S-A-I-L means the wind that I'm catching. You need to know that as well as the S-E-L-L. Who am I selling my attention to? Who am I selling my ear to? Who, 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 who am I allowing the space? And then who's speaking the wind into me? What direction is it blowing me? Different types of ships that there are. We got relation. We got owner. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bunch of ships. We can go down a long list of all these types of ships. A lot of us have found ourselves in a situation. And usually we're in a situation ship because we allow anybody to blow sold ourselves, and, and all of a sudden we wake up and say, where in the heaven am I? Ain't it funny that we wake up wondering where we are, and in Genesis, after Adam and Eve sinned against God, God came walking through the garden asking, where are you? The question meant, you're not where I told you to go. You're not. See, see, if you would have followed my coordinates, if you would have followed and not trying to be the captain of your ship, but let me be the captain and you be the co-captain, if you would have followed my coordinates, we would be here by now. But for some reason, you don't went from the window to the wall because that sweat was dropping. Now you caught up in something. A situation ship. So I stopped by. Is it still morning? Nope, it's afternoon. This afternoon, I'm about to wrap. To help some of us and lead others of us back on course. It's not difficult. Let me get where I'm going. We can, we can settle this ship and set sail. Point one. Learn to hear from God. Samuels. I got to get something for the girls. Help me with a name. Samantha, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Because they, it's too much stuff in y'all generation. Too many confusions. They, them, thou, thou, not. Let me settle something. The ship that God made you to be is the ship that you're going to be. That settles that ship. I said ship. That's it. You were created to be a certain type of vessel to be used in a certain way. Learn to hear from God. Question everything that comes to you. Filter it through the word of God and the word of my parents. So I can stay on course. As I stay on that course, I will then begin to understand what God is saying to me. 
I will then begin to understand who and what I am carrying. Samuel had to hear from God for himself. Samantha has to hear from God for herself because without hearing from God for themselves, they would not have been able to then speak who would be the next king. They would not have been able to set the nation up for success. At the mere age of 12 and 13, Samuel didn't know what God was about to do in his life. He just knew he heard God talking to him. How do you know when God is talking to you? When you feel it in your spirit. When it's a challenge that you know it's going to help people. When it's a challenge that you know that some people who are doing wrong ain't going to like. But it's going to set you apart. A ship is in the water. Why? Because sometimes you got to break away from land. You got to break away from what's familiar. You got to break away from what everybody else is doing. Because I'm called to be a trailblazer. I'm called to set sail and do something for God's kingdom. The analogy is used that we are vessels. Watch where I'm going, parents. This is for y'all as well. Because the pathway for your life, sorry to tell you this, it won't be easy. Jesus let us know in this world we will have trials and tribulations. But we don't need to make it any more difficult. The text we just read states that the Lord separated the waters from the waters. Did we not read that? He said it was a lower water and an upper water. And then man was here in the middle. Said that there's the sky. Follow this. You got to learn to navigate Led by the Holy Spirit. Genesis says, first, the Spirit of God hovered. That's why I sang that song first before I started this message. To create an environment. When you learn how to worship God, learn how to hear from God, then you can go in any environment and change it for God. Any environment. And change it by taking the spirit of God with you. Because water can be chaotic. The text says that in the beginning was chaos. It says the earth was, out, was without form. It's a bunch of chaos going on. Water was there. In all of this chaos was mixed in, but you couldn't tell that it's just water because it's blended in with the land. It's blended in with the sky. But God's voice began to separate and put things in alignment and in position where stuff was supposed to be. The voice of God working with the spirit of God. Water up high, water beneath. When we think about going through water, Usually the only thing we think about is navigating the ocean, the rivers, the creeks, and all of that. That's one dimensional. But we live in a multi-dimensional world. So God has given you multi-dimensional powers. So not only are we walking, navigating, sailing through the water that is below, but there's also water above. Check your forecast. It's going to rain this week. And the water that is above the sky will begin to fall down to the earth. Some people struggle with driving in the rain. Some people struggle with walking 
in the rain, going outside in the rain, doing activities in the rain. But when you develop the ear to hear from God and the ability to worship God and flow with the spirit of God, then you will learn to dance in the rain. In any situation that your life will face, you will know how to navigate because I'm a ship of God. I'm a vessel of God. And now I know how to move through life. I know y'all ain't heard it like this before, but it's what the book said. You just read it. I don't want you all to become like the generations before that get polarized by situations and circumstances in life that don't move when it's raining. They only know how to be one dimensional and walk on one surface. You are a generation that's called to be able to navigate multi dimensions fluidly because you got the drip. Our grandparents came from an era where they kept their money in the mattress. Then came the debit card and the credit card. Most of them still hadn't gotten one. Never one to use a check one, only could do things one way. And now they're struggling in a crypto world. Come on, come on. But you have the ability to help the previous generations through their shortcomings, as well as advance the emerging generations and be a voice of God to them and to them. Tell me I'm lying. Samuel was able to go speak to Eli when Eli used to hear from God but couldn't hear from God no more. So he was able to speak to grandma them. Samuel was also able to anoint David and the uh, 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 forthcoming generations. We got to be able to stand in between both waters. We got to be able to stand in between both generations. We got to be able to speak to the old and to the new. And you all got the ability as long as you learn to worship and hear from God. Now, it's not going to be easy. It's not easy to say no to certain things. I've been there. But ask yourself this, is it worth my life to be in with everybody else? I'm about to close. It's not a deep word, <laughs> extemporaneously. I was at the best HBCU. Y'all wasted y'all money, student loans, all of that going to them spots. I don't know. Listen to me. I'm not going to direct you wrong. Go to FAMU if you're going to go to an HBCU. Block all them out. That's why they frustrated now, because they made a bad decision. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's, you know they crazy, right? Yeah. Now you know why. Made a bad decision. So while I was at FAM, came home one weekend, one of my closest friends is a music producer named Rico Love. Another one of my friends, very close, D-Town, part of the Corner Boys, music producer, all that. My mom was a flight attendant, and she was staying at a hotel by the airport for a layover. Now, I live with my dad at this time, come home, we living in the city of the rock, Latonia, Lithos, and I tell my dad I'm finna go to my mom's hotel. I'm gonna kick it with her for the night. All right, cool, let me know you get there. What I didn't tell them is that my partners, Rico, Etan, they, they had invited me to a club called The Deck. Y'all yeah. remember The Deck? Yeah. All right, The Deck gone, Jazzy T's gone, all that, it's just done. That whole little shopping center gone, done. 
On my way to visit my mom, my friends called me. At the time, Bone Crusher had a little record that was doing this thing. You outside of the car, you think I'm a bone? Y'all ain't saved, boy. I tell you, yeah, it's y'all, man. It's everything. Yeah, I hear you. I, I hear you. I'm going to see what y'all do outside in the parking lot. What's, 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 what's. <laughs> they hit me up. Hey, bro, pull up. So I stopped by. I pulled up. We kicking it. I leave. They go get in their car. I go get in mine. At the time, I'm sitting on Michael Jordan's. Y'all should know what that is. Okay, all right. I want to make sure. You know what Jordan's is? 23-inch rims. Chrome. Deep dish. Yeah. Run flats. You feel me? <laughs> I walk up to my whip. And I always had the habit of walking around the whole car, make sure there was no nails, nothing that's going to cost me some money to get my tires replaced. So as I come up off the back side of the vehicle, on the driver's side, about to walk and get in, three cats hop up. Shh. <laughs> you know what it is. Y'all probably never heard of the Jump Out Boys. <laughs> Y'all generation got some straight, soft gangsters now. It's, it's just... They're not even worded the term gangster. It's just, just, I ain't even going to go there. Listen. Three pistols. One pistol in my face. Another pistol filled a barrel in my back. Then another one, he had a pistol too. He the lookout. <laughs> you know what it is. Then stole my vehicle. Stole my yays, stole my phone. Rob, right there at the deck. Now I should be dead. Should be. But if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Adam, where are you? Where? Would I be? Situationship, how did I get here? Where would I be? At that moment, it was the first time I ever heard the voice of God. Now I'm a pastor's kid. My dad is Bishop Eddie Lee Long, pastor of the biggest church in the state. I don't know what's going there now, but it, it, but it, but it, 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 it and, and uh, did I say that? I didn't mean to say that. Forgive me. Uh, but, 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 but. I did, but I didn't, but, I, but, 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 all this time, raised in the house, son of a bishop, this, that, and the third, going to church, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then, in my worst situation, having followed the voice of the enemy, not saying my friends were the enemy, but we was doing some bad stuff then. Y'all know what my name was at the time? That's when I used to rap. Take a while, I guess. Do you remember? My name at the time was Young Dirty Bishop. <laughs> Think I'm lying. Put it in on YouTube. You'll see. <laughs> I always been honest. So what I was doing then, I was telling y'all what I was doing then. I was Young Dirty Bishop. That's <laughs> what it is. But that moment was a pivotal moment. It was a moment of change. Because up until that moment, I had been listening to the wrong things and was off course. And in my worst time was when I heard the voice of the Lord. And I heard the Lord say, they're not going to kill you. Just as clear as y'all heard me say it to y'all, that's how clear I heard the Lord's voice. So clear to the point that I got a little arrogant. I can't tell you exactly how I said what I said to him. I said, you can have it. Put a little French word in front of that. <laughs> mm. 
I started feeling myself. Somebody robs you and you see their face. You can make them out. They got every reason to kill you. And these boys were from Simpson Road. That's where they found my truck. Some west side cats on the east side trying to run it up. What am I saying? No matter what situation y'all have found y'all self in up to this point, it's not too late to hear from God and follow his directions. I don't care what just happened at school on Friday. I don't care what's plotted for this coming week. I don't care how it's supposed to go down. I, I, I really don't care. I don't care who you've come into agreement with that ain't got nothing to do with God. When I heard the voice of God, you heard me say I got a little arrogant. What do I mean? I felt empowered. In the face of the enemy, with some 36 bullets pointing at me, three guns and three Negroes, I felt and knew that there was more for me than what was against me. And so it may be difficult to live this kingdom lifestyle, to be a vessel for God. But you're in here today to be called up, to be called out, to be reminded and informed that you are a vessel for God. And you're carrying some major weight. That's why the enemy wants to get you off course. But today, now, you have the ability to say, to hell with the devil. Go back to where you, whoever the guy is that's been trying to get in your pants, bro, I'm not with it. Whoever they are who's trying to get you off course and get you to do something that's going to have you in a situation that you will be sitting in a space of, God, dog, I wish I would have listened to that slim ball head cat. I don't really know much of what he was talking about, but I got some of what he was talking about, and I wish I would have listened to some of he got that I was talking about when he was talking. Don't want to see you in that situation. And so today, choose to listen to God. I can't control when you will hear the audible voice of God. Who's got a Bible? Not no phone. I need a, I need a, I need a, there we go. Good, good, colorful, ocean color. It's the right Bible for the right moment. I can't control your Samuel moment when God speaks to you three times. I couldn't control mine. It was in my worst situation. You mean tell me all the altars I've been at, all the youth conferences, all the youth Sundays, and this is when you speak, God? Couldn't control that. But I'm so glad he did. We can't control that moment. But we can control this moment. If you want to hear God speak, start reading this. I gave you a head start today. That's why we started at Genesis 1. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning. Because no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what situation, I'm even speaking to the parents now, we can always have a new beginning. We can always start over. If the GPA is 2.8, 1.6, or 3.6, Monday is a new beginning. I can start doing my homework now. I can start reading. I can start writing. I can start listening. I can start applying myself. I can start telling certain people no. I can start telling the right things yes. All of us are at a new beginning. Think about a ship. Thank you, sweetheart. Everybody standing. Think about a ship is that it's always in the water. <laughs> you feel me? All the way at the seventh row. That, that one skipped over everybody else. And all the way to the seventh row. Ship is always in the water. 
which means it's always in position to be clean. It's always in position to be washed off. It's always in position to be refreshed. Fun fact as we're closing. A 14-year-old. Anybody 14 in here? Any 14-year-olds? Got yep. Boom. Anybody 15? 13? 15 right there. 13, 12, 16, 17, 18. The youngest person in the world, 14-year-old, named Laura Decker, was the youngest person in the world to sail solo around the globe. As a ship, as a vessel of God, you're not too young to do great things. You're not too young to do great exploits. You're not too young for the drip. Because the strongest storms make the best sailors. Somebody say, I got the drip. It's in me. It's on me. And it's around me. It's in me. It's on me. And it's around me. Doing this as I close. Is there any housekeeping things that need to be done before I close? Any housekeeping? Any housekeeping things? You sure? Every parent that has a teenager in this room, I want you to go get them. Every parent that has a teenager in this room, go get them. Set sail. Don't teenagers don't move. I didn't tell you to move. We got to learn how to listen. I didn't tell any teenager to move. I said every parent that has a teenager in this room, you go to them. Set sail to them. Set sail. Set sail to them. Set sail. Is there any teenager that your parent is not here today and you're standing solo? Any teenager? You got one? Anybody else? Anyone else? I want to make sure everybody's covered. Pastor, could you? Oh, Pastor, if you don't mind, you can get with this young lady. Now, this is not for the microphone, but it's for your home. So it's not something that needs to be projected for everybody's ears to hear. But this is for your home. If we're honest, as parents, some of us have got our son and our daughter off course. We got them off course because of the decisions that we made even before they were conceived. Then we had some addictions that we couldn't break, we couldn't shake. That they witnessed us flow in and that they've picked up on the residue got on them splash the water from your ship <clears throat> caused the wave that has impacted theirs and we've struggled to admit that ain't no change without admittance there was one that was wild, eating wild locusts that came yelling, repent. Repent simply means to change our mind. Because if I can shift my mind, then I shift my direction, which then shifts the direction of those who I'm carrying. But I got to recognize it first. And there's some patterns that we have set for our household and that our young person has adopted thinking that it's correct and it's not. And so for those who are standing about, you don't have a young person that's with you now, I want you to start praying for the strength of these parents now. Stretching your hands to them. If you got a young person that's just not here today, they may be 40, you may be 70. 
is just stretching your hands to them, praying for them. Pray for your household as well. Parents, what I want to challenge you to do now is to look your son and your daughter in the eyes. If you got two or three kids, there's no rush on this. Take the time to look each and every last one of them in the eyes. And this is what I want you to do. Is, it may be difficult for you. You may have never done this before, but just looking at them and telling them, I know you've seen me do this, but that wasn't right. And I don't want you to accept that that is God's way because it's not. And my commitment to you is to show you the way, <clears throat> his way. I know you saw me speak to your mother like this. That wasn't, I don't want you to settle for a guy teach, treating you like that because that's not the right example. I know, baby girl, you saw me and dad this. I know you see me like this at work. I know you see me not speak in faith. I know you see me conform to my situations and thinking that things are impossible. I want you to know that all things are possible through Christ. I want you to just go ahead and begin speaking to them. You don't have to yell it out if it needs to be a private moment, but take this time and begin to set your son, your daughter free because I know they say do as I say, not as I do, but we have seen you do a lot of things and I've started to do what I've seen you do and it's become a bunch of doo-doo and it's a bunch of stank stuff going on in the house. So we got to clean it up. Just start speaking, start praying, start talking to them now. It's a lot of stuff that mama's not proud about, that dad's not proud about. I hate that you saw me do this, but I was doing the best I could at that situation with what I was working with. But now I know better and I, I'm going to teach you better, show you better. I'm going to live you better. I'm going to live you better. I'm going to live you better. As I'm cutting through these deep waters, I got to be honest with you, it hadn't been easy. But I don't want to make it any more difficult for you than it has to be. And so I'm going to navigate this thing. I'm going to drive this boat right. I'm going to move us forward in the right way. I'm going to show you how to handle your money. I'm going to support your dreams. I'm going to begin to spend more time with you so you can understand both the price and the value of things. I don't know how long God is going to be, give me with you, but I'm going to maximize the time that we have together. Speak into your son, speak into your daughter. Speak, speak, speak. This is breaking some stuff up right now. I'm seeing some tears already flowing. These words needed to be said. I know we've gone a little long today. You messed up asking an Ed Long to come in here because we were going to go long, but it's, it's necessary. You didn't know it, but there are some things that have been locked up in your words in this environment, this Holy Ghost filled environment, are the key to break some things up. Mama, I've been waiting for you to say this. I've been, I've been upset with you. We needed this moment. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I was starting not to like you. But I love you. I know some of us got somewhere to be, but this is the best place to be right now. If you got to tip out, I'm not mad at you. Go ahead and roll. But there's some breakthrough that's happening in some households right now simply because of some words that needed to be spoken. Hallelujah.
Just seeing love flowing right now and I don't want to interrupt when we talk about the spirit we're challenged to do I'm sorry not do two things concerning the spirit that's to vex the Holy Spirit or quench the Holy Spirit quench meaning to restrict and so you may have gotten yours but there are others who still getting theirs just wanting to make sure that every house is covered right now. standing those who are able Some real believers. 
believers, not some of y'all who don't care and ain't trying to pray. But because of his back and the way they, some things they had him laying on, there's a bone. Am I saying it right? His spine is against his lung. I need somebody to get that all for Elder Amaris because she has healing in her hands, Prophet Philip. I need some men that's got the Holy Ghost to come up here as we get ready to lay hands on him, Apostle. Because let me say this to you, Rod. We believe God. I want you to stand right here. But I want to know this. Do you believe God? Apostle, is it okay if I let Pastor Long? I am believing. Now, the Bible says whether two or three touch and agree. But here's what you need to understand. Whoever else is in this room that is looking for God to do something in your life, all you need is one or two people to touch their hands with you. Now, some of y'all can act like you don't need God if you want to. But if I was some of y'all young people, I would grab the hands of two people and say, before we get out of here today, I got you need to tell the person who hand you grab. It's some things I need from God, and I need it real quick. Minister Natalie, you are a praying woman. I need you to come up here and stand with us, too. I need some praying people. Because when Rod come back, they going to give us a different report from the hospital. I mean that, Chantrice. Come up here and stand with your brother. Can you please tell somebody around you this report is going to be different? Oh, no. I need you to, I need some real people. Come on, say it out loud. This report is going to turn around. Well, come on. I need y'all to open up your mouth as Minister Long lay hands, him and a marriage, on this man. And we are going to believe God. We're going to believe God. Come on. We're going to believe God. Come on. We're going to believe God. Somebody call that spy now and tell it to shift. Come on, get that spy off of his love. Come on, Minister Kiva. Come on, I need you to open up your mouth. Come on. Come on, come on. Mama, tell that spy to get off of his love, Elder Lily. Come on. Get off of his love. You got to move. You got to move. Open up your mouth and pray for your neighbor. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. God, let your miracles happen. Miracles, signs, and wonders. God, move by your power. Somebody virtually needs your power. What can I my to you? Somebody needs your head, God. Somebody needs you this week, God. Somebody need a miracle. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. Trust your word, God. We know that you can do it, 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 God. Spy, you got to move. You got to shift. Miracles in this body. No more seizures. 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 Yeah, it's done. Clap your hands like you know it's done. Open up your mouth and give God victory. Yes, God. Yes, God. We believe your report. We believe the report of the Lord. We believe the report of the Lord. We believe the report of the Lord. We believe.
speak this to you, and I'm speaking this for everyone in the room, because this is family. There is a method to the miracle, and the method for you is faith in continuing to believe. I'm believing for you. They all are believing for you. Hear me. So, what seems to have come about is not a penalty for sin, but it's an opportunity for a testimony. It's totally different. And it's according to your faith. And so our responsibility is to believe belief into you. Let me say that again. Our responsibility is to believe belief into you. There was a man that had a son. A part of the problem was not Jesus' belief for the healing of the son. The daddy said, Lord, I believe, but I need you to help my unbelief. And so he needed Jesus to believe belief into him. And so I am believing belief into you that the same God that protected and preserved my life, the same God that brought you this far in driving and moving and doing all that you are doing, the same God that has set you free against all odds, the same God that did that work for many others all throughout this room and all throughout the world. I'm believing that you believe that this miracle come about and take place now in Yeshua's name. Do you believe? I believe. That it is so. It is so because you have believed. So continue to walk out in belief. We're believing belief. We are believing belief in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Keep your praise going. We believe and belief in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God some glory. Come on, clap your hands and give God some glory. Come on, clap your hands and give God some glory. Yeah, you didn't touch some people around you and tell them it's done, it's done. Come on, encounter somebody, tell them it's done. I know that it's done. Come on, it's done. If that word blessed you, come on and let's uh, let's thank God for it. Ed Law, Junior, Dr. Law, we just thank God for him and for that word and I'm going to let him close out but I wanted to do this was anybody blessed by that today I want the young people as well as some of the adults I want every person in this room I'm a believer in this I'm a believer in sowing and I know we've given our time we've given our offering but can anybody believe with me to say, I want to give a gift that says, I just thank God because I know something has changed in my life today. Can we do that? It's, 
I learned this, and the apostle has always taught us this. It's not your equal giving, it's your equal sacrifice. Today is the 25th, and so I'm going to ask for a seed of $25. If you're a young person and you don't have that, what you get from your heart is what matters. Do, am I being clear? I want every person, if, as you look at the, uh, at the baskets that are over here, if you want to give cash, that's fine. I want them to put the, uh, up on the screen how you can sow. And we always go touch the baskets with our devices. As a sign that, I'm showing that I am in agreement with what I'm giving. One of the things I learned when I graduated Spelman was that when you, uh, when, when I studied religion, all of the different uh, uh, places they had me to go as part of my class, they always gave before they worship. And they laid money everywhere on their altars because they trusted who they believed in and they believed in giving. I want us to show the God, the, the one, the creator, the one that's above all, how much we trust and, and, and give our heart to him. This is not a money gimmick. It is not any of that, so I counsel every assignment of the devil that tries to get in people's mind virtually and in person. It is not a gimmick. You give it from your heart is what's going to bless you. And it's not the amount. Somebody might have a hundred they want to give. Somebody might have a dollar or five dollars, whatever. It's what comes from your heart. So as we're standing here, come from around the room right now. As you look on the screen, give a seat that said, God, this bless me today. And I'm not going to let the devil come against nothing that I just got. Come on, every person. If you don't have the 25, give something. Give something and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, as Dr. Long come back and close us out, we get ready to go home. We're going to eat dinner, have a good afternoon. But that word was a blessing to the people and to the body of Christ, those virtually and those that are in the room. And as you give and come to your seat, open up and say, I thank God for this word. I know I kidnapped you for a long time. So we're going to go ahead and let you go. So everybody could stand. As the old saints would say, rest on your heels. <laughs> we believe in belief. Believe in belief. Praise God. Anybody feel better? Praise God. Praise God. I see that many of us still have our phones in our hand. If you're still giving, just raise your hand because I'm going to ask you to do something else with your phone so I don't want to distract you. Give them a few more seconds. I don't know, Coach, how quickly we can put prompts on the screen or not. If, if we can't, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, I want you all to text me, all right? I want to stay in touch with everyone in the room, uh, all of our clergy leadership as well as all of our lay members and parishioners. I want to stay in touch with you because there are a lot of things that we are doing. Quite a few people have asked me, man, what do you have going on, etc. And this is the best way for me to keep you informed as to what we have going on. Family members and I have launched what we call the Long Center, the Long Center for God. And it is a hybrid. If you can imagine, church meets impact center. We're kind of in the middle of that street. The analogy that I use oftentimes is that if you go downtown on the east side of Atlanta, you have on one side of the street Ebenezer Baptist Church, and then on the opposite side of the street you have the King Center. One focuses on the spiritual development and impact, and the other focuses on human services. Well, we would be the street between both of those, a center that focuses on both. And so we gather on Saturdays. We gather on Saturdays. And it's an opportunity, no matter what church anyone may be a part of, to come and just be edified in the Word of God, meaning to learn so that we can go and have great er impact in this region and throughout the world. And so if you can, I want you to text the name LONG, L-O-N-G. Doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Text LONG to this number, 404 999-5787. That's texting long, L-O-N-G, to 
5787. You should receive a link back. A link should come right back to you. It's amazing I can text everybody all at once with no phone in my hand. Isn't that crazy? So I just sent everybody a link back that did that. Click on that link, fill out your information, and click on compete. Complete, I'm sorry. And we will be connected, all right? You can holler at me anytime, and we will stay connected just like that, all right? I thank you all for receiving me. Thank you all for reaching out. Thank you all for reaching out and having me, hosting me during this set time. It means the world to me. You all don't know. It means the world to me. I never take an opportunity to speak to the sheep that are being shepherded for granted. Our benediction is very simple. If we all agree and have come into covenant on this word, moving forward and taking action in our lives, let's simply say these words after me. God, you said it. We believe it. That settles it. Hug somebody, give somebody a high five, squeeze them real good. Go in peace. feel free to come and thank God for our speaker. Please feel free. He would love to just speak to everybody. Come, Feel free to come and say hello to the speaker.